Hi, it's V with Crafting Daily Dips. Today I've got a pinwheel tower card for you. Now, these are very popular right now, so you may have already seen some, but I've been having a lot of fun playing with this fold, and I've added some extra elements to mine to step it up. I'll show you these so that you can add them to your cards as well. So let's take a closer look at this card in action. First of all, there is a window panel right here that allows you to have a sneak peek into the next segment. And as you start to turn it, you notice that there is a pop-up element here that stays popped up even when it's all the way turned. And here's a view from the top so that you can see that it's popping up. And then on this last panel, there's another pop-up and then room to write your message. I think it's a lot of fun, so let's go ahead and get started. These are the pieces for the card. Now, it does take some prep work to get everything cut, but once it's been cut, the actual assembly is pretty straightforward. Let's start first with this piece of designer series paper. I'm using the Bloom Where You're Planted paper, and this piece is four and a half inches by four and a quarter inches. It's got some score lines that are fairly easy to remember. You score at one, two, three, and four inches. That piece is going to form the actual tower that is in the middle of the card. Now, I know some people like to pre-cut their paper into four inch widths to conserve paper because then they can get three of those across a 12 by 12 page. If that's the case for you and you don't have any pieces that are wide enough, don't worry, there is another way to assemble this using cardstock for the center piece and I'll show that to you when we get to that step. There are four cardstock pieces that radiate out from that central tower, and that's these right here. So I have four pieces of Simmer Insider cardstock, and each of them is two and three quarters by four and one quarter. We need some designer series paper pieces to decorate the panels. There's a larger panel size and a smaller panel size, and we're going to need up to four of each. Now, the reason that I say up to is because on this particular design, one of my cardstock panels has a window, so I don't need designer series paper on this. So I'm only showing three pieces of each here. The larger panels are two and a half by four inches, and the smaller panels are one and a half by four inches. We need up to two of these little strips because this is the pop-up mechanism. And I cut this out of designer series paper instead of cardstock so that there would be less bulk. It's three inches across by half an inch high. And the actual height doesn't actually matter that much, but the width does. So I'm using this piece of designer series paper that looks like it's got wood planks. So I thought it made sense to just go ahead and cut out the height of one of those planks. It's a little bit less than half an inch, but that's okay. Or you could choose to make it quite a lot higher than half an inch. For decoration, I've got this piece of paper lattice. These are laser cut pieces. And all I did was take a full piece and use my snips to trim it right down the middle to get this piece. So you only need just a half. I've got some images that have been either die cut out or fussy cut out from the Bloom Where You're Planted paper. So that's most of these right here. I stamped out an image from the Plentiful Plants stamp set and cut it out with the Perfect Plants die. And this hanging planter also comes from the Perfect Plants die set. The shelf here comes from the Window Flower Box dies. And my sentiment comes from Biggest Wish stamped in Garden Green. I'm doing a little bit of stamping right onto these two designer series paper panels, and I've got my foam mat from the Stamparatus underneath for a little extra cushion. I turned those pieces to the side, and I'm stamping with sentiments from The Biggest Wish using Garden Green ink. The paper has a light pattern, so it's still really easy to read the words. Let's start with assembling the tower that goes in the middle. So it may be hard for you to see the score lines, but here's the one inch, two inch, three inch, and four inch score line. So there is a little half inch panel right here on my right. I'm going to go ahead and use my snips to cut out just a tiny, tiny wedge from that because this is going to be our gluing strip. 
So I'm cutting from the edge of the paper to right where that score line is. Then I'm going to fold here and reinforce it with my bone folder. Then I'm going to skip one score line and reinforce the next one. So this is the one that is at the two inch mark. Now what I'm going to do is put adhesive on this. This is my gluing tab. I'm going to fold this over from that two inch score line and have them meet up like this. I'm making sure to go all the way to the crease and all the way to the edge. And the reason that we fold that over to meet up is so that we can make sure that it's going to be perfectly flat in that direction. Now we're going to go ahead and pop it open like this and crease down along the other score lines. And now I'll go ahead and reinforce them. and it's perfectly flat in this direction as well. So now we have our box. Now this type of box structure is very common in pop-ups. I like to reinforce that second set of score lines after the fact so that then I know that it will lie flat in both directions because if things are a little bit off kilter, you may have a box that is fine in one direction but may not be totally flat going the other way. So now we're all set with our central box. Now I told you there was an alternate way to do it using cardstock for the central tower. If you wanted to use that, you would use a piece that was six and three quarters by four and one quarter. You would still score at one, two, three, and four inches, and those are all mountain folds. And I'll show you this way, because I think it's easier to see. What you're going to do is fold all of these as mountain folds and basically create a box like this, and then that last fold puts the box up here right against this longer panel here, and you would glue that down together. So it's basically like a central tower with one of the panels already attached. So that's a different way to do it. For our purposes, I prefer to use the designer series paper in the middle because it's a little bit less bulk and I find that it moves more smoothly. Now that we have the tower, we're ready for those spokes that come out from it. The only difference on this one panel is that I used a stitched rectangle die to cut out a window. And I used the one that is approximately one and three quarter inches across by three and one eighth inch high. Now I'm going to go ahead and adhere my lattice panel to this window. And I'll show you on the back you can see that there is just a little bit of overlap right here. And so what I want to do is put adhesive along this edge of the lattice piece. For that, I'm going to use my silicone mat and I'm going to go ahead and lay down my lattice piece. Now there is a front side and a back side, but really they both look great and you're going to see both sides. So it doesn't really matter which side you choose to put the adhesive on. I'm going to run my stamp and seal just along that edge there. So some of that lands on my lattice piece and then the rest is on the mat. And any excess here, I can just kind of use my fingers to kind of push that back a little bit until I can't see it anymore. Just like that. So this edge is going to be sticky. Now for the residue that's still on your silicone mat, just take some scrap paper. I almost always have something by the recycling bin by my desk. And press it onto the adhesive 
And when you peel it off, it's going to come off on your paper and your mat is going to be clean. Now take the sticky side and adhere it to the back of this piece. And check it from the front as well. Everything looks straight and ready to go. So now I'm taking my tower and I'm going to put adhesive on one of the sides. When I go to put the second panel on, I like to do it with this other piece sticking vertically up. That way I know that I'm not crossing any lines here and then it's going to be able to fold down flat and not bump up against anything. For this last panel, we don't want to put glue over everything because remember it has a window and we don't want that to be seen. So instead, I'm going to put it in place and kind of take note of where it ends. So I'm using this as my guide here and it ends at about this lattice right here. So I'm going to put glue all along here up to this point. And better to put too little than too much here. You can always go back in and squeeze in a little extra glue under there if you need to, but you don't want that glue to end up showing or be sticky in the final card. Okay, let's go ahead and test. That looks good. Now you just have to decide how you want to decorate the panels and put them in place. Okay, let's go ahead and install our pop-up. So here's that strip that is our pop-up mechanism, and we're going to do all of these folds as mountain folds. Now notice that there are two gluing tabs on either side, and then there is a shorter panel and a longer panel. For this one, I don't necessarily need to trim off the wedges for my gluing tabs. I am going to go ahead and put glue on just this one here. That's the one that's attached to the longer panel. So only glue on this tab. Now I'm going to turn it upside down. So here's my piece that has the glue on it and I'm going to put it into my card right next to this crease and I'm putting mine along the top edge 
but you can choose if you want to put yours in a different position. So I'm putting it right next to that crease. I do not want to cross over the crease at all. Once that has set, I'm going to go ahead and fold down this crease. So now, looking at the top, I've got my gluing tab here, and then I've got that shorter panel next to it. I'm gonna go ahead and put adhesive on this tab now. All the way up to the crease and to the edge. And I'm going to kind of keep this pressed down here, and I'm gonna swing my card backwards so that this panel is going to meet up with that glue edge, like this. Once that glue has set and I swing my card back open, you can see how this now pops up. Now some pop-ups flatten when your pages are out at a 180 degree angle, but this type of pop-up stays propped up. So that's what makes it interesting is it's still going to be popped up when this is all the way open. And now I'm going to go ahead and install this piece onto it. Now, when I'm choosing the position for my piece, I wanna make sure that it's not gonna bump up against this edge here. And I also wanna make sure that when it's in the closed position, I don't wanna be able to see it from the other side. Now, for your design, you might choose to have something peeking out and that would be fine. But just for my purposes, I want that to be a surprise. So, that helps me to figure out where I want to place it. Because I might have to rearrange the position a little bit, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is put some glue on here, but I'm not gonna stick it down to my other piece of paper just yet. I'm gonna let that glue sort of air dry until it doesn't look so white anymore. When it's a little bit more translucent, then I can use that as sort of a temporary adhesive. So once this has set, go ahead and flip your card backwards closed and make sure that everything moves smoothly, nothing bumps up against each other, and that it's going to be hidden from the other side. Now, if you wanna use the same idea and create a different card, you just want to find something to go on here that's going to be approximately the same width as the long panel on this strip, which is one and a quarter inches. And then if you line up the left side and the right side, it should fit in there. You may have to do a little trial and error and play around with it for a little bit, but it should be able to work for you. Now, if this wasn't so tall, you could squeeze in another pop-up on the bottom here. But otherwise, if you want to add an additional one, you're gonna to need to do it on the opposite side of the card. You can't do it on the panels that are in between, because if you did, then the card would not be able to fold completely flat to fit into an envelope. So from the original card, you can see that when this is up, the pop-up on the other side is raised as well. It's when you're in this position that both of them are laying flat. But if you also had a pop-up here or here, then the card would never be able to be completely flat. So let's go ahead and put the last pop-up in place. We're skipping this panel and we're gonna put it here. And now I'm gonna stand up my card because this is already raised. Here's my other strip. I'm folding down these folds as mountain folds. This time I want the long panel to be towards the left and I'll go ahead and put glue on the gluing tab that's next to it. Going to turn it over. Now my glue is underneath here. 
and I'm going to go ahead and put it right up against this crease. But notice that I'm doing it on the other side now. Once that's in place, I will fold it over here. And I can see as I'm doing that, that my fold is not completely accurate. There's a little bit of overhang here. So I'm just going to adjust that right now because again, I do want that to be kind of hidden. I'll change that fold a little bit so that now it's even with the edge of this panel and there's no more overhang on the other side. Once that's been fixed, I'll go ahead and put glue on this last little glue tab, just on the tab. And then I'm going to swing my card over so that these two sides can meet and press it, let it set. And then when I open it, my mechanism ends in place. Now, by putting the long side on this side, notice that it's gonna slant in this direction upwards as you go to the right, whereas on the other one, it slants down as you go to the right. So it angles whatever you attach on there differently because we installed it differently. On this one, I'm going to go ahead and put my last little cutout. And here, I don't need this to be hidden because there's already an open screen there. So I'm actually just going to decide how I want to place this so that some of that plant peeks through. I want it to look like it's a screened window or door and you're peeking out past it. So I think I'm gonna put my plant right here, which when I look at it, it's going to be like right on the edge of that tab. So I'll put some glue here on the left hand side of that plant and I'll kind of put it this way and this time because the placement is not as critical I'm just going to put it right on there okay we finished now, if you want your card to be viewed in a certain order, then I recommend that you save the pop-ups for the second panel and the fourth panel. That way, when you set it to the first panel before putting it into the envelope, your card will be flat so it can fit in that envelope and the pop-ups are a later surprise. So that's our completed card. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed this dose of creativity and that you will join me the next time. Till then, have a great day.